Welcome to the Tyler WIQ software series. In this session, we'll take a look at PFSense, recovering it from an archive and importing it into VirtualBox, where PFSense will become the router for a virtual lab infrastructure. Here we go. So we'll assume that we have our downloaded archive of PFSense in a compressed format. In another session, we looked at a compression algorithm or compression format for 7-zip, and we opened up our 7-zip archive. For PFSense, we have just the compressed .zip folder in this case, which has our virtual machine OVA file in it. What we want to do is open up the archive, and we can see that we have the PFSense OVA file right here. We want to do is we'll want to bring that down to our desktop. So what we can do to decompress this one is simply just drag it down and drop it on our desktop. That way we'll have it for future use if we want to. I like to have everything on my desktop. So bring it down. So now we have PFSense on our desktop. This is the decompressed version ready to import into VirtualBox. So the next step is to actually import it. So here's the hard part. You can simply double click on the OVA file and that will import it directly into VirtualBox for you. Assuming that all the parameters have been set up by the person who created the OVA file, it should import directly with no issues whatsoever. You can look at the defaults. You can see where things are going to go. I usually accept the defaults unless there's some reason not to do it. Um, at that point, we can just click on the import button down here. The import button will start the import process. A little bit of CPU cycles going on here while we import it. And then we'll have our virtual machine. And we now have PFSense sitting inside VirtualBox ready to go. Over on the right hand side, you can see the system properties. If we need to change those system properties, we can click on settings and we will probably want to do that, at least to make sure that everything's put in place. For our lab infrastructure, we want to be set up with a couple of different adapters, so we'll, we'll take a look at it. In our lab setup, we're going to be using a router, which is our PFSense router, and it's going to be visualized as having two switches, and we'll call them virtual switches. It may not be exactly how PFSense does this, but in essence, that's what we have. We have virtual switch one and virtual switch two, and we have a third adapter, which is going to go to the internet. Now, this is all virtual stuff. These are all software components, right? So the virtual switch, PFSense router, they're all virtual with virtual adapters. We do have a physical NIC that's put in place. The physical NIC is what connects up our computer to the internet. And we want PFSense to connect to the internet as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that one of our adapters goes through the physical NIC to allow us to gain access to the internet. There are three adapters in here, adapter one, two, and three. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna bridge that physical NIC with adapter two. Adapter one and adapter three will be what we call host only adapters, and they're only available inside VirtualBox. So if we have other machines like the Windows 7 box that we could install, it would be connected to one of our virtual switches. So what we need to do is go into settings and take a look at configuring those adapters. One of the first things you'll notice when we get in here is at the bottom, there's a couple of exclamation points, warnings or issues of some sort. We will want to take a look at make sure that those are cleared before we go on. Sometimes they'll stop the process from working completely. Other times it's just a, a just an annoyance. But you can put your cursor over and see one of them is uh, the first one's display screen here, meaning we're using the wrong video adapter for what VirtualBox is expecting. So if we want to change the display screen, we can go up to display on the left hand side and they're recommending we use VMS VGA. So right in my graphics controller, I can choose VMS VGA. And the other warning is hardware virtualization is enabled, but it's not supported on the host system. Uh, so that is potentially going to be a problem for me. It means that virtualization isn't enabled on my laptop. We'll see if, uh, if that's the problem in a little bit. In the meantime, before we go there, we'll go in and configure the adapters. So on the left-hand side in network, so choose network. You see we have four adapters up there. We're only using three. You can click on the advanced button to show you all the advanced um, settings. And we're going to want to verify that the adapters are set in the appropriate uh, attachments. In this case, adapter one should be host only. We're going to have it attached to virtual, both, virtual host only Ethernet adapter number two. And you can verify the MAC address, the cable is connected, they should be. There's nothing to change here, you don't need to change them. Adapter number two was that bridged adapter from the network diagram. 
Uh, it comes up by default as NAT, which we don't want. We want to be able to access the machines from the outside as well. So we want to bridge the adapter. Ultimately, it would work if you had it with NAT, but there would be some limitations in some of our, our labs. So we just want to bridge the adapter. It shows you what it's actually connected to. And again, you can verify into the advanced components if you want that there's a MAC address and the cable is connected. Again, you shouldn't have to change anything here. We want to go to adapter number three now and verify it's set up. So we click on adapter three and it is a host only adapter. This one's connected to virtual host only ethernet adapter number one. It doesn't say number one, but by not having a number, it is number one. The other one was number two. Verify the Mac and the cable connected and away we go. And that should work for us. We don't have an okay button, but uh, sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Let's see, uh, let's see what happens here. So we'll go back and actually try to start PFSense now. We fix the errors that we think we have. We might still have one there. Try to start PFSense. Again, I say try to start PFSense. I happen to know here it's gonna fail on me, but that's okay. Failed to open session for virtual machine. Ultimately, that's because virtualization isn't turned on. So the CPUs in our laptops uh, have the ability to do virtual infrastructure, to do a virtual machine. But in our case, it hasn't been enabled in the BIOS. It wasn't turned on by default. So we actually gonna to have to go out, reboot our Windows machine and enable virtualization technology in the BIOS. Take a look at actually setting that up. I've rebooted my laptop. I hit F2 to get into the BIOS setting. It may be different on your machine. I've gone over to the advanced tab by arrowing over. Notice where virtualization in my machine is disabled. We need that enabled. So I hit enter. It gives me the choice of disable or enabled. Disabled would be highlighted. So uh, arrow down to enabled. Once you have enabled highlighted, hit enter, select it. And the, the commands may be different on your laptop or your, your PC, so check it out. But it should come back and say virtualization has been enabled. We now want to exit and save our changes. So we'll right arrow over to exit. Once we get into exit, we'll choose uh, exit saving changes, which will initiate a reboot of our machine here. Uh, we want to make sure. So when you hit exit saving changes, it will pop up a box. Say, Are you sure that's what you want to do? Yes, by all means, save the configuration and exit now. Uh, click yes. Your machine will reboot and you should be able to launch PFSense. Before we launch PFSense, we'll take a look at the configurations to make sure that everything is good. Clicked on settings and we don't have that virtualization error anymore, but we still have the display error. Remember before we couldn't press OK, now we can. Our changes weren't saved, so we better check on the network as well. Make sure the adapters are, re are configured the way that we wanted them. The first one, adapter one, seems fine. There's the advanced configurations adapter two. Oh, it's been changed back to NAT. It didn't get saved the first time because virtualization wasn't enabled. So we'll set the adapter two to uh, the bridged function. Make sure it's the bridged adapter. That will make it PFSense work just the way that we want it to. Now that we've got it configured, we've cleared all of our error messages, we can click on start and PFSense will attempt to start. In this case, I say attempt, it is going to start for us. I have full confidence. It does go through the whole boot up process. It takes a, a few minutes for it to boot as it loads everything. Uh, PFSense is an open source free router firewall that's used across multiple industries today. We use it in a lab environment. Uh, there are small and medium sized companies that will actually use PFSense uh, as their router firewall. It is configured through a web interface. When we're all done, we're gonna get a, a command line prompt menu choice structure here. We'll be able to see its configuration, but as far as managing it goes, you'll HTTP into it from another machine to manage all the uh, structures. If you're trying to set up the firewall functionality or trying to set up routing functionality, it will all be done through a, a web interface. So we just need for the whole thing to boot up. Now that we're booted up, we're sitting at the configuration screen. We can see the configuration that we have. We can see that we have our two LAN interfaces there. LAN 1 and LAN 2. LAN 1 is 10.10.10.1. LAN 2 is 10.10.20.1. This is not the standard. This was built by the configuration, the folks that built this OVA for us. Uh, there's adapter 2, which is our LAN, our WAN interface in this case, which is the which is the physical adapter, the physical network. So this is the bridge functionality and PFSense got an IP address on the local network here. So we can verify the configuration, at least for the lab infrastructure that we're gonna use. PFSense is up and running. We should be able to route between our virtual switches. 
Well, we imported PFSense into VirtualBox, noted a couple of error messages, configured the adapters, went to start PFSense to find that our laptop didn't have virtualization enabled. Restarted the laptop into BIOS mode, enabled virtualization, went back and reconfigured the adapters to meet our lab infrastructure, cleared those error messages, started PFSense, and we now have a router for our lab infrastructure. Thanks for watching and join me for more installs and reviews in my Tyler WIQ software series.